What is going on everybody? Welcome back, MTG here with another episode. If you're new to the channel, hi there. So iPhone 14 Pro Max, and I actually wanna talk about this device 10 months later. I've been using it since its release. It's currently July at the time of this recording. We're literally two months away from the iPhone 15 series, the 15 Pros and the Pro Maxes of the world. And the question comes down to, is it still worth picking this up when we're literally two months away from release to the successor? I'm gonna to try to answer that and share my thoughts about this device. So without further delay, let's dive right in. So starting off with design, first of all, let me tell you that it feels really good. It feels really good to hold in the hand. It's definitely premium. iPhone has never swayed away uh, from the quality of their design. They always cared about how it feels in the hand, what types of material they use. So it has a matte finish. I have the gold color right here. I kind of wish I went with like the matte black, this, the black color, not even the purple, just a straight black color. Uh, but nonetheless, I got this gold, it's, it's all right. Then it has stainless steel sides uh, and these are fingerprint magnet regardless of the color that you choose last year. I had Sierra Blue, it was a fingerprint magnet. I hope they make this a matte finish too. Uh, and like I said, great build, I'm a fan of it. The one thing uh, that may drive people away is that we've had this design now for three years, the iPhone 12, 13, and now 14. So if we're getting with the iPhone 15, that's a four year cycle of nearly an identical design with just very, very small tweaks. So it's pretty much like when you see this, this is the design of the iPhone. You know it's an iPhone when you see this particular design. Heading over to display, it's great and it's vivid. And it gets really bright, 2000 nits of max brightness outdoors. Uh, this dynamic island, for me, I've gotten used to it, but it hasn't really enhanced my experience or my productivity, anything like that. In fact, I wouldn't mind having the notch back. That's just a hot take for me. Uh, that didn't really bug me, neither does Dynamic Island, but I also haven't really seen its benefit, at least in my use case. Some may really enjoy it, some may not. I'm just one of those kind of neutral. I mean, if it's there, it's okay. If not, then I'm not really looking for it. But what I like to see from the iPhone 15 series uh, is probably thinner bezels. Definitely USB-C is something that uh, looks almost confirmed that we're gonna be getting on the iPhone 15 series but this shouldn't be a reason like don't expect a huge drastic design change with iphone 15 series now before i continue the video i just want to quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video which is going to be me that's right uh, i have my latest wallpaper pack it's called jello and you can definitely check it out in the link in the description down below this right here i can pretty much change uh, if I go to customize, I can change it. Here's one of them from Jello. Absolutely love this wallpaper. I also have a bunch of merch on my YouTube page if you wanna check those out as well as it does support the channel a lot. But let's head into software and performance with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So iOS 16 has been super buggy with me. I've just had like these freezes out of nowhere multiple times throughout the day and it had gotten really annoying to a certain extent like I just want to place the phone and not use it. So now for nearly a month I've been using the iOS 17 beta and those same problems are still there. I mean it's great, it's fast, uh, but it hasn't been really that smooth. Like the 120 hertz, it's smooth, but like smooth as in it keeps freezing for just no reason. After, you know, multiple updates I've had with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, still has those freezing issues. And I hope maybe it's because I'm running on the beta version, developer beta precisely, that uh, it may come out to be perfectly fine when the public release comes out in September. So hopefully they're able to iron out those problems with the beta. But for right now, like software experience has not been really stable for me. I mean, it's getting me throughout the days. Uh, like it's not coming to the point where I can't use this phone, but it's, it's at the point where you do notice and you start to get annoyed by the hiccups that this phone is giving you. And it's at a point where this phone shouldn't give you those hiccups because you're paying, you're paying for that premium 
price. And other than that, like watching YouTube videos, if you're going to play lots of games, use this as your mobile gaming device. It's great, but those things do add up and I'm not a huge fan. But iOS 17 does have some pretty cool upgrades. It's not a drastic upgrade. It's got some pretty cool ones. This is going to bring me into the camera. So 14 Pro Max, the camera is has an upgrade from its predecessor, 13 Pro Max, and we're hearing about upgrades with the 15 Pro series, which is to be expected. So for me, the iPhone camera has been one to rely on, especially for point and shoot. Now it has a 40 megapixel, which is definitely an upgrade from the 12 megapixel the predecessors had, uh, and the phone is even better for video. And this is where I start to talk more about the iPhone. It's better for video, and I think it's the perfect device to start making content on. I don't think you should wait for the iPhone 15 Pro just for its camera quality. Like this camera is super good already with photo and video quality. And if you're looking to make content, whether that be in short form, like on YouTube Shorts or TikTok, Instagram Reels, or long form and start a YouTube channel, this is it. Like this is the perfect device. There's no need to go and look for the iPhone 15 series. I'd say pick it up. No need to wait for the latest camera because we're at a point where I can st I can even recommend its predecessor. If you're looking to be on a budget and you want to save some money but start making content. If I had the opportunity, I starting a channel for the first time, I'd start with an iPhone and probably go with like even an iPhone 12. For just for reference, like I'm using this in my hand right now, but recording here is the iPhone 12 mini. That's how much I personally enjoy recording video uh, for the YouTube channel. That's going to lead me into battery life. So for battery life, it's it's been a downgrade from the 13 Pro Max. Definitely it's not good as its predecessor and it's definitely not good as the Galaxy S23 Ultra, like this has been performing like a champ. Like 40 Pro Max, it's good, but it's not great, especially when I use it for videos, especially when I'm using it for TikTok, especially when I'm using it for FaceTime. It just drains faster. Yeah, I'm getting about six hours of screen on time. But for me, I'm a heavy user. Like I use my phone very frequently. Uh, always on display, it does take up a lot of battery. I still have it turned on knowing that it's going to take up some more battery. Charging for me, uh, it's not as fast as other devices that I've tried out before. So when you get used to fast charging at like 67 watts or at 100 watts even, uh, this charging speed is just, it's not it. And I don't use lightning anymore. Like I, I strictly use this and MagSafe charge it. Uh, so I'm hoping with USB-C, then I'll at least be able to be a little bit more comfortable by relying on one cable for all of my devices. That's gonna include the AirPods Max when that gets a, a refresh with the USB-C as well as AirPods Pro. MagSafe has been good. Like I like MagSafe and I hope that type of technology is implemented into more devices. And I've completely got rid of, you know, using lightning. It's like worst case scenario, I'll use it like maybe once every six or seven months. And that's maybe if I don't have a MagSafe charger or a, a portable uh, MagSafe charging pack to use with the 14 Pro Max. But I'm really hoping that with the 15 series, we get an update with the battery life. So that's really it for, you know, the battery life and how it holds up. If you're a light user, like having a larger phone like this, it's gonna it's gonna get you throughout the day and probably into the next day. But if you're a heavy user like me, and the more the, at the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed, you're gonna be on your phone. You're gonna use it for frequent FaceTiming, uh, for emailing, texting, calling, watching all of your uh, social media content, YouTube videos. I would say hold on just a little bit longer and wait until the 15 series and see how their battery life performs. That's leading me into price, which is going to pretty much wrap up the initial, my initial thoughts about the phone itself. And then I'll share my final thoughts. So pricing 1099 for the 128 gigs. I think that's expensive and it's only going to get more expensive with 2023, the iPhone 15 models, especially according to rumors, it's going to be a hundred dollars price hike. I hope that doesn't happen, but if it does at least raise 
uh, the minimum storage from 128 to 256 gigs. I went ahead and I picked up 256, so I paid $1,199. Now, Galaxy S23 Ultra, its main competitor right now, it's $100 more expensive so i wouldn't be surprised if apple did raise the price of the 15 pro max i wouldn't recommend picking up the 128 gig model especially if you're looking to start making content or you share and say or you take a lot of pictures and videos and save them specifically to your device uh, other than that like there's nothing really more to talk about price you're not going to frequently be able to find it on sale I've rarely come across Apple devices going on sale. Uh, maybe if it's a, with a carrier deal, then yes. But other than that, if you're gonna pick it up, uh, just pay it full, full, then good luck finding that on a good sale. Now my final thoughts, I love the iPhone. I love using it, especially for the channel. But the software experience for me in the past 10 months with this has been subpar, especially since I use a 13 Pro Max as my main iPhone, I had some high expectations and this kind of brought those expectations down. But nonetheless, this gets me really excited for the iPhone 15 series. Overall, uh, I, I would start to say, think about iPhone 15. I wouldn't completely say hold off on this phone, the 14, but I, I would start to say, hey, iPhone 15 is coming very soon. You might want to check it out before you pick up the 14 and 14 Pro series because once that comes out, uh, the 14 series will drop in price. Just a, uh, just a little disclaimer, if you do, and for the past couple of years, this is how it's been, but if you do want to pick up the 15 Pro series, Apple is going to discontinue the 14 Pro and Pro Max. They're not going to sell it. Uh, that's at least from what... Uh, last year and the year before have shown us like right now they sell the 14 Pro and Pro Max but they won't sell the 13 Pro and Pro Max so if you do want to pick this up after the 15 Pro and Pro Max come out you'd probably have to look at other options other than picking up straight from Apple do keep that in mind but that's really been it absolutely love it I am super grateful of using this iPhone because it's what pushes out a lot of content anyway that's been it for me i hope you guys did enjoy if you did be sure to super man the like button comment down below and best of all share this video because it really does help out the channel a lot it will help push my content out to more people and don't forget to check out my youtube page where i got a bunch of different types of merch from shirts to coffee mugs to desk mats i also do have my latest wallpaper pack i'll be leaving a link in the description down below it's called jello it's my all-time favorite uh and yeah I guess I'll catch you guys in the next episode.